All right, we're rolling, Mason. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another rendition of the Hicks from the Sticks podcast, episode number seven. Let me pull it up. Seven, seven, number, no, you number. Think I, you think I would be more? Prepared. I'm gonna guess 88. One second. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. 88. <laughs> Hot damn! All right, folks. Which means 12 more. Ep- no, after this one, 12 more episodes until our 100 episode giveaway. Damn. I don't even know what we're giving away yet, but yeah. apparently we're giving something away. Yeah, stay tuned f- for uh, all the details in uh, 12 episodes. There you go, folks. All right, well, welcome to another jam-packed episode of the Hicks from the Sticks. Um, we got a lot of stuff going on this episode, but we could give you a little rundown here <laughs> quick. We have uh, Ryan, uh, Rancher Ryan is his tag on Instagram, isn't it? Yep. Correct me if I'm wrong, Dev. I'm pretty sure. Yep, and... Um, so he's a rancher down in Idaho slash Nevada. Mm-hmm. And so we kind of talk about how his operation is a little different than, uh, well, we don't really talk about how it's different than up north. We just talk about how he's able to do it down there. How they ranch in that area of the world because, you know what, it is different down there. It's a lot more desert. And it's just, it was, inter- it was an interesting conversation. No desert, but he's also like mountainy as well where he's at. So yeah, it's kind well, of like, it's kind of what the hell is going on here <laughs> yeah but it, it was good though otherwise and then also later in the episode yeah. we had a quick interview with returning guest drew gregory about his new song so you guys stick around for a while to hear that one but that's was- right stay tuned for that one it was, it's always good chatting with drew so s- stick around for that um but before we get into any of that um i have a question for you Devin. all right um did you get after anything crazy this past weekend this past weekend yeah. uh no okay so everybody, um, I'm going to give you a little rundown of something or something for my Saturday here. Uh, I went to the PBR in Red Deer. It was actually my first time going to a PBR before. Okay, before. okay. I've been to like rodeos and stuff, but never just a specific bull riding only event. Mm-hmm. It was actually pretty sweet, man. It was electric. Like they, the Red Deer at that um, uh, PV Mart, whatever it's called. The Centrium. The Centrium. Like they put on a show there, man. Like it's it's electric in there good time um so we went there um i went there with some some folks and uh we started drinking some beers Mm -hmm. and uh they weren't doing a cabaret there oh kind of surprising so because of that and because billy bobs is no more Mm -hmm. everybody made their way to olds Mm -hmm. as one does when there isn't a billy bobs in red deer (laughs) yeah yeah so we made our way there and uh I, while I was on my way home, I texted Devin here. I said, Devin, what are you doing? Oh, boy. He's like, oh, I'm just having a rum and coke. I said, well, you want to come to the bar? He's like, sure, pick me up. <laughs> We're like, okay. And I was just No work. joke. This guy comes to the bar, and he's miserable the entire time, <laughs> sitting down, just watching people, just miserable. Devin, mm-hmm. come on, man. That's not you. Yeah, you know what? It was a long day. I, if For anybody that... I guess I didn't say what I was doing, but I was at the I was out helping James at Tall Timber Calico. Uh make sure to check out all their beef products on their website. Um I was helping him out and I was just tired, man. It was a long day. You didn't look tired. I was tired. You didn't look it. I was pretty tired. My knees were hurting. And I didn't stand you up. You were once. sitting the whole time. I know. That's why I, my knees were hurting. <laughs> Man, oh. um, anyways, I expect better from you, Dad. Uh, so next I was a little time, disappointed for that reason. Maybe, maybe the old, uh, I guess this will be released after. Yeah, this will be released after, but there's the uh, old college rodeo this weekend. So if you saw us there and said hi, it was awesome to meet you, I guess. <laughs> Just getting ahead of that. Yeah, I might as well get ahead. And of if the curve. you saw us being idiots, that wasn't us. That was, <laughs> our, that was our doppelgangers. That yeah. was that was our clones. Yeah, so, exactly. Uh, we we went to bed early. Mm-hmm. We actually read a book and went mm-hmm. to bed early. Yeah, around probably nine o'clock. Yeah. So if you see us there at the bar, it's not us. It's not us, Mom. Yeah. If you're listening to this, I went to church on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. I say we're gonna switch it up. Usually we do the interview towards the end, but we're gonna hop yeah. in right away. Let's hop in here with Ryan right now. All right, we're rolling, Mason. Right on. You want to introduce our guest here today, Dev? Well, I only know his first name. I was trying to find your last one. But uh, today we have Ryan. He is from the States. He's a rancher in the States. And uh, welcome 
to the podcast, Ryan. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me. So I guess might as well. Do you want to introduce yourself, who you are, where you are, where you're from, stuff like that? Sure. Uh, my name is Ryan Bedke. I live in southern Idaho, and my family has ranched here in this area since 1878. Oh, geez. I'm a fifth generation rancher, raising the sixth generation. I have six kids. Uh, we ranch in southern Idaho as well as northeast Nevada. So, um, yeah, we've been doing it for a long time, and we just started uh, selling our beef direct to customers a little under a year ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when, uh, where was the family from, uh, like, before they moved over to the States? So, uh, my great-great-grandfather was in Germany. Okay. And he immigrated over, spent some time in California with the gold rush, but got more into the cattle side of things, and eventually moved into the Mountain West and uh, settled there in Southern Idaho. No, right on. That's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's so. That's really cool. I don't know my geography, but so Idaho borders Nevada. I thought it bordered it Utah. It, it does. does. So Idaho or Utah and Nevada go together. Uh, and if, you, okay. if you were to take the Utah Nevada border up into Idaho, about twenty miles, that's Oakley, Idaho, and that's kind of our base of operations. So. Gotcha. About 20 gotcha. miles from the Utah and Nevada borders. Mm -hmm. So do you just have pasture then that's in Nevada? So we have rangeland as well as home ground that we hay and that uh, like I commute right now. We're, we're Our kids are in public school, so I'm commuting to Nevada every day and I feed cattle there. That's when I refer to the ranch. That's kind of where I'm talking. Gotcha. Gotcha. Cool. So correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't Idaho also known as the state of the potato or something like that? Yep. So yeah, is that know. is that more central in northern Idaho then and the south is more so pasture? Or how does that work? Uh, the town where we're based has a lot of potato farming in it. We there's a lot of a lot of farming here as well. Um, but then you get up into the mountains and it's more more rangeland obviously you mm -hmm. can't farm in the mountains but in the valley like where oakley is there's a lot of farming and we have some mm -hmm. farm ground as well mm -hmm. gotcha awesome all right uh we kind of have uh one kind of uh icebreaker type question uh when we were discussing this podcast you said your wife is from canada is that correct that's right yep your one canadian connection so yep. um um where in canada is she from again she is from brantford ontario so it's kind of like it's like where Wayne gretzky's from that's right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. that's right everybody knows about that place <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right yeah they i've heard about that for since i met her obviously have you uh, been up to canada at all yeah a few times yeah we would don't you, get up there a lot but yeah mm -hmm. would you mostly just go to ontario or have you guys visited uh, any of the western states at all or western provinces I've only been to Ontario. My wife, her dad's family is from Alberta, so she's been in, through Alberta and all mm -hmm. the other places, but I never have. Mm -hmm. So she converted you to a hockey fan yet, or is she still in the process of doing that? She's still in the process, I guess. <laughs> she, she likes it, but I, I haven't really gotten into it. I, I haven't had an opportunity to watch a lot, and I haven't sought it out. But. Well, and kind of what I've been told as well from uh, some people that I've talked to from the States as well is that it's like it's not really broadcasted that much down there as well. Like it's very kind of regional if you're close to an NHL team, but if you're not, like I've been told, you don't really have much access to it, right? Yeah, it's not. It's definitely not as prevalent as like football or basketball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So actually, speaking of which, I think we're just gonna. I'm gonna ask the question right now. We're gonna save it for later. But who's your Super Bowl prediction here? <laughs> you know, I like football, but I have not been following it like at all. <laughs> I've been too busy to care about it too much. But we'll just pick a team: Chiefs or Eagles. Uh, let's say Chiefs. All right. All right, all right. That's a pretty good pick. Good. <laughs> awesome. All right. Let's get into the meat and potatoes here, though. And start talking about the ranch. So you kind of explained the history a bit. So you're a fifth generation rancher, correct? Your family came from Germany. Is there any other important pieces of history along with that, or? Oh, not. I mean, that's that's kind of the my ranching heritage. Is that is that line? That's my on my dad's side. So. 
did your family ever dabble because you said you come from a very like a majority farming area did your family ever dabble in the whole farming whether that be small grains or even potatoes or not really not really we mostly just grow hay we'll mm -hmm. we'll lease ground out to people to farm for us sometimes or have them pay us rent but we're not big farmers outside of just hay oats trit that kind of stuff mm -hmm. yeah so since your your family's been there for so long do you guys still have any of the uh any of the i don't know if artifacts is the right word but any of the old antiques from uh from your family from uh shit could be even like almost 100 years ago now at this point right yeah yeah i mean there's there's stuff around one cool thing about our ranch is we use my i, I talked about my great great grandfather who settled the area we still use his brand on our cows okay so we still he his name was frank bedkey and his brand was fb and we still brand an fb on the left hip and then my great grandpa branded with the hat brand which we brand our steers with and that's why our beef business is the hat is hat brand beef because we brand our steers with my great grandfather's right. brand okay that's pretty cool that's yeah that, cool. that's pretty sweet <laughs> awesome so are you guys like only cow calf are you guys obviously raising your own beef so are you doing then the full process farm to fork then type yeah. of thing yeah we're historically cow calf but uh as we've been getting into the beef thing the last year we've been trying to keep back a few more of our own and background them and then feed them out so they're ready to eat mm -hmm. so the full so, process mm -hmm. so we definitely like we're pretty broad podcast pretty broad audience for the people that maybe don't know could you explain that whole process in a sense how that works from how it comes from a baby calf to their plate dinner dinner table yeah so cow calf operations pretty much raise their have the mother cows have babies typically in the spring for us anyway and then by that fall when they're around 500 pounds or so they get sold to somebody who has grass or cheap feed or something to grow them up another 500 or so pounds um, and then at that point when they're 900,000 pounds whatever they go to a, a feed yard if you're conventionally grain finished like we are go to a feed yard and put that last four or five hundred pounds on them and uh, anyway I have a guy that we that does that for us and then here in the States if you're gonna sell your beef retail you have to go to a USDA inspected facility. So we have a place that we haul our beef to. Um, I'm actually, my next trip's on Monday, haul steers or whatever up to them and they process it, package it so it's ready to sell and then we bring it home and store it here. Mm. And every Tuesday we ship nationwide in the States and then we also do events and sell locally as well. We also do, there's that side of it. And then we also do, for people who want to buy bulk, we do quarter, half, and whole beef as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, right on. Have you guys ever uh, dabbled in like the purebred part of the game at all or not so much? We haven't. Um, I've known people that have, but we haven't done that. Mm -hmm. So actually, I got a question, and we were probably going to ask this more later on, but I'm just curious, how do you ship beef? Like, do you have to like get special boxes made? Like, how does that work? Yeah, so it's a cardboard box, and then we put a liner inside the box. Uh, mm -hmm. The company we use is called Green Cell. Uh, it's, it was the cheapest and seemed like the best option. It's not that I'm more big on green, whatever, but it's a green product. It's a corn, it's a corn foam kind of thing. It's kind of like, you know, those packing peanuts. I remember when I was a kid, we'd eat them sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's that same kind of stuff. If you pour water on them, they dissolve. You can burn them, you compost them, whatever. So we have liners that we put in those cardboard boxes with the beef, and then we add dry ice. Depending on how far we're shipping, how long it's going to take, we'll put anywhere between five to ten pounds of ground or of, of dry ice in it with it. So where's the farthest you guys have had to uh, ship your beef to? We've shipped to Alaska and we've shipped oh. to Florida and Jeez. all up the East Coast. We, anyway, pretty much all over. I think there's only like seven or eight states we haven't shipped to so far. Oh, that's awesome. Canada? Yes or no? I would if I could. The 
I can't guarantee that it's going to get there fast enough. With the, yeah. Oh, no, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah. That's yeah. fair. How does it get to Alaska so quick, or is it just like priority air type of thing? It just goes. Yeah, it's air. You have to ship ship that air. Gotcha. Same I with like the it. East Coast. Anywhere outside of like the Mountain West has to mm -hmm. be shipped air. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, game more to let the ranch inside. So, of course, we found you through Instagram. That's how I found you. Um, and I was just looking through your page, kind of trying to figure out who you were. And um, I noticed you guys do a lot of stuff on horseback, which us talking to ranchers through the podcast and through our friends, people that use ATVs over horseback, it's I wouldn't say it's 50-50, but it's within a range. Um, is there some people say there's a reason to use horseback and some people just prefer it. Is there a reason for you guys using horseback when you're out there? Yeah, so I definitely prefer it. I feel like I get less sore when I ride a horse than when I ride the four wheeler, but we use them, but a lot of our range is really rocky and steep and brush and trees and whatever. So you can't really get around on the four wheeler as much. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you got to have horses for that reason. But I mm -hmm. definitely prefer it as well. Mm -hmm. What's the horse's name? Well, names. Uh, I saw multiple. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's there's several. We you usually need three or four in your string so you can keep going along. Um, the ones I rode this last fall were Brucey, Brucey Bog Trotter. <laughs> <laughs> Name his mother was Matilda. I don't know if you've seen the movie Matilda or whatever. When I was a kid. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, his mother was Matilda, so he's Brucey Bog Trotter. But uh, yeah. I have a horse named Lexi. I have a horse named Yeller. Um, Old Yeller, eh? That's right. He's Palomino. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Though. That makes yeah. sense. <laughs> so awesome. Yeah, no, I was just curious about that. And then I guess we were talking about this earlier, but you, since you ranch in two different states, is there, do you have challenges with that at all? Like, is there like two different legislations type of thing you got to deal with or anything like that or not really? It hasn't been a real issue for us. Um, in Idaho, a lot of our range is on the U.S. Forest Service ground. Mm -hmm. And so we have to deal with the Forest Service there. And then in Nevada is Bureau of Land Management or BLM, a lot of it the range mingled in with the private. So you've got two different agencies there to work with. But it hasn't been a great big issue as far as going across the two. Mm -hmm. Um. Since we're on the topic, can you explain to, especially the Canadians, because we don't really have anything like the BLM yeah, or like the forest, like you said, also the forestry, I don't know what was called association. Do you want to kind of explain what those are? We don't really have those. We, well, just have, we have crown land, but yeah, it's pretty much different. the same thing. Is it yeah. the same thing? I think I it's know. pretty similar. <laughs> I would think it would be pretty similar. It's just federal ground, federal ground that is, is public. Um, mm -hmm. in Idaho it's all blocked out as public land but in nevada when it got set up the old timers who did it anywhere where there was water mm -hmm. they filed on as private so like in nevada we have private all mixed through the public um, and then in idaho is more blocked out as public but yeah you you we own a grazing right there have is have certain amount of um, allotment and we pay dues based on that allotment, but it's kind of a, uh, it's a right that you own, but it's on public land. Mm -hmm. So like when you say a right, so do you have a right to certain paddock type of thing or just a right to so many animal units within that, within a certain area? Yeah. Yes to both, I guess. In Idaho, we run in kind of an association with some neighbors and some cousins and, uh, we all have certain amount of right within that allotment in Idaho. Mm -hmm. And then in Nevada, it's a private allotment. So we own all of the rights to that, to that ground. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Awesome. So I always had the understanding that Nevada was just a desert. <laughs> is that, uh, is Northern Nevada actually pretty like uh, mountainy and treed then or? Yeah, I mean, it's still pretty dry. It's, I mean, they call it the high desert because it's high, higher elevation, but it's still pretty dry. We, we were in a pretty dry climate, but uh, 
we have meadows that have a creek that runs through it and there's natural hay meadows there that we hay and we divert the water and irrigate with but it's pretty dry still yeah mm -hmm. okay gotcha that's kind of what i, I figured <laughs> yeah <laughs> they always say nevada is like a desert but i guess that's more kind of by vegas <laughs> right? yeah. it's definitely yeah. more deserty down there yeah mm -hmm. exactly yeah, for sure well how often do you go to vegas oh not very often i've been I, it's, it's been 10 years plus oh, since, yeah. I've, since i've been there but yeah. don't go to nfr or anything like that i never have i'd like to i yes yeah, it's on my on my list of things to do but i've never done it yeah. <laughs> you gotta go while you're still young ryan <laughs> that's right well i'm not i'm getting i'm getting to be not that young anymore i'm gonna i turned 40 this year so <laughs> yeah fair enough <laughs> that's why you gotta go soon i know time's time's running out that's right awesome. all right um back into the ranching um what are some other challenges though you have in your in within your area because you talked about it first of all being dry i'm assuming that's a pretty big challenge and i'm assuming water also can be a challenge as well is there any any other ones Ah, uh, the the dry thing is a big is a big issue the last couple of years it's been kind of a drought we're getting a pretty heavy winter though i think it may be the drought is lifting a little bit but that's kind of the big issue um if you don't get enough snow then the reservoir doesn't fill and in our farm ground in town your water right your shares will go down and how much water you can get for that year so anyway that's a big issue um that's probably the main one we've had little run-ins with our with the forest service through the years but that's been kind of quiet for for quite a while so mm -hmm. gotcha gotcha awesome Nate, so you have the po the negatives, I guess, the challenges. Now the positives. What's your favorite part of the whole ranching calendar? Favorite time of the year? I like when I can stay at the ranch with my family when they're not in school. So like mm -hmm. June, July, August is probably one of my favorites because I can have all my family up there. When COVID hit, we actually, and they canceled school, we just moved everybody to the place in Nevada. It's like... 42 miles from the nearest town like this the town in in southern idaho that we are based in and we just lived there and we lived there for like two and a half years and it was awesome but now the kids are back in school and so i, I get less of that but that's probably my favorite is the summertime when i can be up there and the kids are there and can help me and be with me every day Mm -hmm. some extra people to help build fence eh? that's right well <laughs> they're, they're not too old yet but i've i've trained them pretty pretty well so I <laughs> like to the point where you can almost just leave them and then just and then, then come back a couple hours later and you'll have a quarter mile fence all done <laughs> ready to go or no well we're not quite there yet the oldest is only 12 but uh we're 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 gonna be there that's the track that's right. we're on Hey, and I mean, you got to take advantage of that free labor while you still got it, right? That's right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and you know, another good time of the year is probably, and granted, if there's not any big issues that arise from it, but I'm sure the branding is always super fun. Yeah, right? there's lots. I, I enjoy all the different times of the year. The branding mm -hmm. season's fun. I really enjoy in the fall, the fall roundup and working the cows and the there's like a month there where I get to be horseback almost every day. And I enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I, I enjoy when we start feeding cows by the time we're done feeding cows, I'm ready to be done. But I mean, that's one of the good parts about ranching is there's, you have all the seasons and there's different things that are coming up and different activities, I guess, to yeah, spice sure. it up. So, so this is kind of, I guess, a bit of a random question, but did you ever, since you've been involved kind of with horses your entire life, have you uh, ever done any rodeo or anything like that? No, not really. I mean, when I, when I was a kid, I rode calves in the kid rodeo, but nothing, nothing. Too yeah. Serious. Yeah. Gotcha. Hey, you only get hurt from rodeo, so it's probably smart. <laughs> that's what it's, that's what I've heard. I have, <laughs> yeah. I have cousins who do quite a bit of rodeo and i have a cousin who's really good does calf rope mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. makes okay. a, makes a pile of money yeah yeah, yeah. no right on awesome all right 
Um, let's get into like kind of like you guys' feeding program in a sense. Um, what does that kind of look like? So starting, when do you start feeding cows for the winter? So at the big place in Nevada, we shoot for January 1st is kind of the goal. We were about two weeks early this year because we got some storms came in and knocked us out of our late fall, early winter pasture. But uh, we typically try to get it to about the first of the year. And then we'll feed in Nevada until around the uh, first week or two in April. Uh, we we can turn out April 1st, but there's not always grass to turn out on. So it's usually more like the 10th to the 15th. Mm -hmm. So that's that's Nevada. And then in Idaho, they typically get on feed mid-December. And then they we can't turn out in Idaho until May 10th or 11th. Anyway, so they're on feed a little longer. I typically spend most of my time on the Nevada side. I have a cousin and some other people that help on the Idaho side, but I typically spend most of my time in Nevada. Gotcha. Um, in Idaho, because you're there's only like a twenty. You said a forty mile, twenty mile difference, correct? Between it's the two a, ranches. Well, it's about twenty miles to the Nevada border, but from Oakley, Idaho, to the ranch is about forty two miles. So there's a forty two mile difference but you are adding on close to a month almost two months of feeding is that just because of the forestry lease or is that because the winter is that different from 42 miles no it's because of the difference between blm and forest service that's that's the there the forest service is more hardcore you have to go out later and back come back in earlier but oh, okay uh, gotcha we gotcha. have other pastures that we go to and it just is what mm -hmm. it is Gotcha. Okay, this is also kind of random, but I think I remember seeing a post once. Like, isn't um, Utah, um, Idaho, Nevada, and another state, don't they all meet up at, like, one point? Isn't there, like, a, a thing there that they all meet up at? There's a there's a four corners. I think it's yeah. Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. That'd be kind of oh. cool if you had, like, uh, some land in, like, every state there. Yeah. <laughs> Probably be a pain to the ass as well. But. We actually have the Nevada, Utah, Idaho three corners is right there on our Idaho range. So I, I've stood in Idaho and peed in Utah and spit in Nevada at the same time. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> <That's actually>. Pretty <laughs> cool. Awesome. Um, and then in the winter, uh, for your cows, are you mostly just feeding just straight hay, or are you guys doing like a TMR ration? How was that looking like? So it's. It's mostly hay, uh, just grass hay and some alfalfa. Uh, if we grow some oats or some trit, we'll mix some of that in as well, but it's just hay mostly. Gotcha. Our, our heifers, we'll do some grain for our heifers, for like our first calf heifers or replacement heifers, we'll do some grain, some corn. Gotcha. gotcha. Is that all homegrown hay or are you bringing that in? Almost all of the hay is homegrown. If we have plenty of water, we have plenty of hay. So the last couple of years we bought a little bit, but we try to raise most of it. Gotcha. So is that on pivot irrigation then? So in town, it is on pivot irrigation, but then the stuff up in the mountains is just natural meadow. So it's flood irrigated. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Cool. Sweet. And then, oh yeah, I guess we already talked about pasture. Right. Move on. <laughs> I, my question thing died well my phone's almost dead so i'm going off of his here so the with the grazing though i know there's a huge i wouldn't call it a push or i guess you could almost say a movement for the rotational grazing system especially like the intense versions of it um do you guys have you guys had any of that implemented into your operation at all or not or is it something that might come up the pipe in the future so that I, I follow a bunch of people who do that kind of stuff and it is interesting and I, I see the merit in doing it. The problem with our setup is that it's so dry and rocky and steep. Like in Nevada, it's something like 70 acres a cow for the grazing season. Oh. So anyway, you think of like a thousand cows and what it would take to move them through enough ground intensively and how big those pastures will be 
and the water infrastructure that would have to be there and the fence infrastructure that would have to be there. And it's just not, it's not plausible, at least on our place, just because of the terrain and the, yeah. la and the lack of water. Yeah, I know. Like that's the big issue for a lot of guys up here as well. Like a lot of guys would love to do it. Don't get me wrong, but it's just the water is a lot of times big issue, right? Like, how are you able to move them around and still give them access to water? So, yeah. or if you throw them up in the mountains, how how the hell will you be able to find them? Too? <laughs> yeah, right. so. yeah, and some of it, I mean, you can't. I mean, you'd have to get in there with horseback, and you'd have to trailer for an hour and a half to get to where they are to be able to get on your horse to move them every day or every yeah, whatever. Yeah. So it just, it would be tough in our mm -hmm. terrain to do that. But again, I, I follow people that do it and I see the benefit. And if you had, if you were doing more meadow grazing or grazing on more irrigated pasture, I could totally see doing it. But mm -hmm. anyway. mm -hmm. gotcha. Um, I guess one thing I got a question on is, I don't know if it would, it would work in your operation of course but have you, have you ever thought about doing like winter cover crop grazing or anything like that on any of the pivots close by or not really so we do we do do some of that we have two pivots that we uh that we have in grass and when we wean our calves we take them to there mm -hmm. and we'll we'll get as much of that out as we can but then eventually the snows come and it gets kind of tromped in and you have to start feeding but yeah we do that with the calves gotcha awesome awesome all right um kind of a random thing again from my research now i noticed that you have this old rinkety dinkety uh windmill do you want to yeah. explain what that is and what that does yeah so again the, it's so dry out here and the, the water is so spread out that uh the old timers put this well in. I can tell you it, how deep it is. I have a little, I have a little album on my phone where I save crap so I can remember it. <laughs> I think it's something like two hundred and eighty-three feet deep or something. Oh damn, it's pretty far down. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but it when the wind blows, it it pumps and uh, it it waters a lot of cattle. Mm-hmm. Are most of your wells with windmills or some solar? Or so we only have the one windmill. Um, and then the rest is, is th the rest that is contained is within a, uh, a pipeline that's spring fed. There, we have a, a head box up, up the mountain where there, there's a spring and we gather the water there. And there's like a 20 mile pipeline there with a series of troughs. So gotcha. it's two. 210 feet to water and 289 feet to the bottom of it. Oh, wow. Damn. <laughs> That's nice. pretty deep. That is deep. You're anyway. almost getting oil at that point. Yeah. It'd be nice to get a little oil there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we only have that on in the summer because the wind, I mean, it blows a lot, but it doesn't always blow. So you can't have that on in the winter time because it would mm -hmm. freeze up. But yeah. Anyway. Gotcha. Awesome. All right, Mason, you have any more questions about the ranch before we ask the last one? Mm, no, not really, to be honest. Off the top of the dome? No. All right. So what does like what does the future for the ranch kind of look like? Any big ideas or plans? Um, of course, we'll get into your whole beef store and the brand and stuff and the social media and stuff, but for the ranch specifically, is there any big plans for that? Maybe some big renovations or anything like that. Looking to do like a Wagyu cross of something, maybe <laughs> something ex exotic. <laughs> yeah. No, I think. I mean, the on the ranch side of things, I think we just keep trying to improve our numbers, improve our calving window, improve our nutrition. We try to get pretty good genetics. We buy some pretty good bulls. We're trying to improve our genetics all the time. Um, I think. I think it's just kind of narrowing up those those little things that you can with the nutrition and the exposure to bowls and good just having everything be where it should be it's kind of a constant constant thing for sure mm -hmm. yeah actually i guess i got another question here now um we were just talking about genetics there um have, have you guys ever ai'd before or is that not very feasible for your guys's operation uh we have it's been a while um my dad and my uncle did it years ago 
after my grandpa died, they wanted to try it and it didn't work out very well. So they've sworn, oh, yeah. sworn that they'll never do it again. <laughs> so, <laughs> Just let the bad taste in the, in your mouth. Yeah, eh? <laughs> they, they still have bad taste in their mouth. So, we haven't we haven't explored it too heavy we we just do live cover so yeah no for sure that's that's fair that makes sense yeah, yeah. all right let's hop into your so your beef store and beef friends so we kind of been talking about it how like what was the initial idea behind that like why did you guys get started with selling farm to fork beef so i've always thought it would be cool to do it we all i've always enjoyed our beef everybody who's ever tried it has told us it was good and so I always wanted to the problem that I think most people run into is just the marketing of it and finding a pathway to market and social media has made it so that you can reach out and touch people all over the country. So I started my personal Instagram page and it kind of got some traction there and I could finally kind of see a pathway to be able to market the beef. So the dream became a reality i guess i just that we we got together and figured out what we needed to do and i've tried to keep growing my social media as we've gone along and i i've probably i don't know more than tripled my personal account size since we launched the beef business it's kind of snowballed but anyway it it seemed like if we were gonna expand and on the ranch we needed to do more with what we had and so we decided to start marketing our beef direct to consumer and that if if you think about it as a cow calf producer like five people at least make a living off of your calves before they end up at somebody's house on their plate like you we'll sell to somebody usually in california or texas that's got grass and that they can put that next 500 pounds or so on them pretty easily because they have grass and then those types of people will often sell it to a feeder and they'll put on the last four or 500 pounds. And then those people will send them to the packers and they'll, they'll kill them and they'll, they'll put them on the rail and then they'll send them to somebody to break them down or a distributor and then on to a butcher or on to a restaurant. And there's just so many different segments there that make money off of your cattle that if you can capture some of that back yourself there's money there if you can handle the logistics and if you can market it oh for sure yeah if mm -hmm. you can cut the middleman out your margins increase by quite a lot but uh sounds like social media has been pretty big for you have you ever are you pretty big on tiktok as well you know i set up a tiktok account and i posted a little bit there and it kind of got big there for a second i got up to like ten thousand followers but i was just so busy on the instagram one and i had more connection there that i kind of I, I'm not even sure if I can still get on to my account on TikTok. I've been thinking I maybe should go on there and do that as well, just to have more of an audience. But Instagram has been kind of my main thing. Mm -hmm. Do you partake in any TikTok dances? No. <laughs> no, that's been one of my core beliefs is that there will be no dancing. So I, yeah, I have I, not even, not I, even yeah. if your kids are bugging you to do one. <laughs> no. Or anything like that? No. Hey, I, man, I'm with you there. I have the same belief. Devin tries to make me do like a TikTok dance for our account. And I'm like, nope, <laughs> <laughs> not happening. <laughs> yeah. I tell my wife, I was like, why would I need to dance? I'm already married. Like, what, what, yeah, the, exactly, what would right? the point be? <laughs> yeah. You've got nothing to prove at this point. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> awesome um so what's your guys kind of main focus are you guys mostly folk i know we kind of briefly talked about before you mostly focus on the like the smaller cuts like the steaks and stuff like that or are you guys focusing on selling halves and holes so both this last year we probably did about an even number of beef through each um mm -hmm. the they both have their benefit and their drawback i guess the the quarter half and whole deal is more of a local thing though i've had people road trip up here i actually have somebody road tripping up from california this weekend to pick up a quarter beef so like but you're somewhat limited there because not everybody's willing to do that mm -hmm. so and then the other thing there is my local butcher can do all of those but he has only so much capacity so at some point that'll tap out as we can only do this many a year there but 
the shipping side of it, I mean, you've got the whole world to work with. It's not just a local small town Idaho customer pool. You got the whole mm -hmm. country. So I feel like that's the side of it that can help us scale it and help us make it big is if you have the national reach. So mm -hmm. in the short term, I'm really trying to build up the the shares side of it because my expenses are so much less there and my headache is so much less there. But I know that at some point I'll tap out. And so I've tried to focus as much on the national shipping retail side of it as well. Gotcha. What's your favorite cut of beef that if you were to pick any cut of beef, what's your favorite? Rib, Ribeye. Rib <laughs> Rib Every good, time. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> awesome. I just like the ground beef. It's diverse. <laughs> you know, the ground beef is the thing that, I mean, we sell a ton of ground beef and it's actually one of my best like marketing tools is if I can get people to eat the ground beef because the ground beef you get at the store is such crap. But like you eat ground beef that's made from a young fat steer versus the old dead dairy cow. I mean, it's it's night and day the difference. So I've had a lot of people buy the ground beef and then come back and buy a bunch of steak because it's so much better. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Do you guys make any like value add products like a sausage or like pre seasoned steaks or anything like that? So right now we do brats. We have two flavors of brats, regular and uh, jalapeno cheddar. Ooh. Yeah, that those sounds are good. They're both good. <laughs> we do some breakfast sausage. It's all beef breakfast sausage, which is good. Mm -hmm. And then some chorizo. So what's a some sorry, what was that? <laughs> chorizo. So it's a like a Mexican sausage. It's actually oh. kind of a hybrid between there's a Basque chorizo and a Mexican chorizo, and it's kind of in the middle between the two of those. Kind of a sp spicier sausage. Okay. Nice. You might have to get some of those. Not yeah. me. <laughs> I'm not a spicy guy, but maybe you. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, what about like jerky and pepperoni? Are you guys not really got into the whole dried products yet? We haven't. The, the problem is in Idaho, there aren't very many USDA inspected smokers or dehydrator type places i need to mm -hmm. i need to search a little bit harder but my initial search didn't get didn't yield any but i would love to do some of that stuff but i just haven't been able to find the right facility to do it there's i i drive right now for my retail beef i drive like three hours to drop steers off just because that's the closest inspected mm -hmm. facility oh wow can you go to either Nevada or I guess if you're close enough to Utah, also to Utah as well? Or does it have to be in Idaho? No, I could. It's just there's not places close closer than that. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yep. All right. And then let's go back to social media for a second. So you got quite the following on social media. What was kind of like the the kicker? What really like maybe the first one post or the one reel that really kicked it kicked it up another notch for you so the first reel that i had that i guess i don't know what's considered viral or whatever but i had i played i, I had this horse that was bucking with the saddle and i found a good song that kind of went along with the beat of him bucking <laughs> and it got like six hundred thousand views and i added like a thousand followers and anyway that kind of got me kind of was my first real they got me going it's social media is weird you'll go along and kind of hold pretty steady and then all of a sudden you have a great big spike like mm -hmm. this last month i've spiked ten thousand followers but before oh, that wow. it, it was pretty i i hung out right there at like at like eighty thousand followers for like i don't know a couple months i didn't move a lot i just kind of i'd go up a little and go down a little and just kind of stayed right there and then I had four or five really good reels last month that did really well. A couple of them went over a million views. And anyway, I've added like 10,000 this last month. Mm -hmm. When you're making your content, are you, do you have to do a bunch of editing with it too? Or are you just out there videoing like, oh, good enough, and then post it type of thing? Yeah, I do a little bit of edit editing. I mean, I don't do a ton. You go and watch my stuff, you can tell that I don't do a ton of editing. It's pretty... It's pretty what you see is what you get. I have the benefit of like living a pretty cool life. There's 
there's interesting things happening that most people don't ever get to see. So I just try to always get my phone out and record whatever I can and then come home and kind of look through it and figure out what might be interesting. And sometimes you hit the mark and people like it. And some people, or sometimes you don't, it's just kind of mm -hmm. just do the best gotcha. you can. So what's the uh, weirdest encounter you've ever had because of your social media? <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, I've had a couple uh, gay guys come on pretty strong, but uh, anyway, that, that, that's, that's, that's been a little weird for me, but it, I guess whatever. <laughs> Just politely tell them no thanks, but yeah, I got a couple, couple pretty uh, consistent following guys that still, still follow me and will throw out a a Hail Mary every once in a while. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah fair. Yeah. fair enough. Awesome. Uh, what do you find are some challenges with social media? Like, did, did you grow up with social media or did you just get into it type of thing? So, I guess Facebook started when I was like in college mm -hmm. and I was always kind of anti. And my now wife made me an account just so she could chat with me and whatever. And so I've always had Facebook, I guess, since it's, it started, but I haven't been super active on it up until a few years ago. I decided I would try Instagram and do that to just kind of keep track of my life and share some stuff from what was going on. But anyway, I, I decided to get serious about it and see if I could create some income and create some opportunities with it. And uh, I have, so it's been, it's been good. Mm -hmm. Do you find there's any challenges with it or not really? The, ch the challenge, I guess, is that it just takes so much time to stay on top of it. Like, I don't know if you saw my stories yesterday, but mm. I, post I posted a picture of one of our hired guys dislocated his ankle. And it's like, it's like screwed up bad. I, I did see that. I don't know if you saw it, but I saw that. That is, <laughs> I've never seen angle. Or ankle, sorry, at that angle. <laughs> yeah, and not be broken. It was only dislocate dislocated. So uh, like, anyway, that's I, worse than it being broke, though, maybe, eh? Maybe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, so I posted that and I've got like 50 people messaging me about that. And so I, I try to always respond just to I feel like if you're accessible, then people trust you and they may be more likely to buy my product if I, if they know me a little bit. So I always try to answer, but it can be a little overwhelming to try to respond to all that and respond to all the comments. And so mm -hmm. that's, that's the biggest struggle is just takes yeah. too much time. <laughs> Almost becomes a full-time job at that point, just doing social media. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's, it's become to where it's worth it there for a while. It wasn't necessarily worth it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but you had to i had to do it to kind of build up my following and build up my anyway the mic so have you also found then that this uh your social media following has really helped with the meat store as well then oh yeah yeah w for sure without without the social media we'd be way behind on the on the beef deal we've done some locally but through the year most of it was stuff we shipped yeah so I know there's there's like uh there are some people who are starting to there's more and more people are starting to sell their meat straight farm to fork. Um is it something and I know there's a lot of guys who are on the fence about it who I don't know if they necessarily believe it in that uh, that much. It, would you definitely recommend doing that to like obviously we don't want to, you know, <laughs> flood the market. Flood the market. We, we don't want to flood the market for you, but like from your experience, do, would you say that's something you would definitely recommend to all the other ranchers out there? Yeah, I mean, it, like I say, if you can handle the logistics and the marketing, then I think it's great. I think that's the direction the market is moving. I think more people want to have a connection to where their food comes from, want to know the story behind it, want to feel good about how it was mm -hmm. raised and where all of that jazz. Not that any of the beef you're going to buy at the store most of it's going to come from a family that ranches. I mean, that's where most of it comes from. But mm -hmm. the consumer these days, it seems like to me anyway, wants to know more about it. So mm -hmm. if you can 
handle the logistics of getting it and processing it and going through all those things and you can market it i think it's a great i think it's great yeah for sure gotcha. awesome. yeah we have a buddy who does that as well and his his big line that he always says is find a farmer right <laughs> go find somebody local and go buy their meat so yeah 100 yeah, percent. it tastes better awesome. if you know where it came from exactly oh, yeah. right oh yeah yeah you got any more questions mason before we get into our last one no, nope, no, nope, that's pretty well all of it. All right, so that's it, kind of it for that part. We always ask everyone. We always close out our podcast asking this question: What's your favorite beverage, alcoholic or non-alcoholic? What's so your favorite I, beer? Well, we usually <laughs> say favorite beer. Yeah. I decided I want to expand. Uh, I want to expand the question. You know? <laughs> Give people choice. <laughs> well, I, I don't drink, so I, it would have oh, to be okay. a non-alcoholic. All right, all right, all right. Good job, Devin. Good job. job. (laughs) Thank you for being inclusive. That's great. (laughs) I'm like this guy over here. All right, what's your favorite juice? (laughs) So I I like a good Mountain Dew, a good frosty frosty dew when you put it in the fridge for like 20, 30, or the freezer for like 20 or 30 minutes and it gets starting to be slushy just a little bit. Yeah. That's where it's at. That's where it's Ooh, at. Gotcha. That's good. That awesome. is good. That's a good way to end the podcast. <laughs> yeah. Good way. And then so and then also you stated it earlier, but everybody who's listening right now, um, go to your local sports book and make a put the mortgage on the Chiefs. That's right. According to Ryan, the Chiefs are gonna win the Super Bowl. So. Yeah. <laughs> bet it bet it all for sure. Put the mortgage on there. <laughs> That's right. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming on, Ryan. This um, has been a lot of fun. What are your socials? Because I don't think we've touched on that yet. Okay, so my personal is at Rancher Ryan, and then the beef business is at Hat Brand Beef. Okay, so. awesome. All right, well, thank you again for coming on. We appreciate it, and yeah, hope to hear from you, or maybe we'll have you on in the future. Yeah, yeah, it'll be fun. Sure. Awesome, Sounds good. All right, and we're back, folks. Yep. Thank you, Ryan, again for that. It was it was nice chatting with you. Um, mm-hmm. Be sure to check out his socials, Rancher Ryan. And then I'm also going to pull up his beef. I can't quite remember. Hat brand beef for all his beef products. All right. Well, that's something that interests you. Go check that out. He um, ships, if you're listening from the States, he only ships in the States. He ships all over the States. Everywhere. Including, he was even talking Alaska. So anywhere in the U.S., ships do so correct me if i'm wrong but wouldn't you have to go through canada to get to alaska why well, I, I bet you the plane just goes from like washington <laughs> over to alaska yeah, I stop in canada so but, taking the ice roads up yeah nice try though <laughs> nice try anyways uh we're gonna hop into everyone's favorite segment especially the, devin's especially mine the western word of the week <laughs> sure <laughs> All right, Devin, we got one here. I don't really understand where it's coming from. I don't really understand it. I hope it isn't like rude in any way. All right. Okay. All right. But this is the word I want you to guess what it is immigrant butter. Oh, boy. <laughs> Oh boy, are we starting to get into those words of the, of the book? No, no, no. That aren't so no, acceptable today? No, we're back trust then? me. We're not getting into those words because there are a handful of them. But no, this is a. Uh, I don't understand where this term came from, especially after you hear the definition of it. But just take a sh- take a shot in the dark, Dev. I don't even want to guess. Immigrant butter. It's nothing. It's nothing bad. I don't know. Um, butter that has spice in it. No. Oh, okay. I don't know. No, no. Clue. Okay. So immigrant butter in the wild west mm-hmm. apparently was gravy made from bacon grease, flour, and water. Well, that's not bad. Yeah. I know. When I originally <laughs> saw immigrant butter, I was like, oh shit, what's this gonna be? And I was like, oh, it's just gravy. <laughs> okay, so, but I don't understand. Like, what what makes that like I'm I'm not a gravy connoisseur by any means, so I don't really understand, but I, like <laughs> I don't understand what makes that weird you know what maybe we'll do some further research on this no we won't and mason you love them all um cooking tiktoks I do. so mason i do put but out, i don't see any immigrant butter on my yeah but TikTok you know you know feed. what you know what though mason is gonna test 
test fire this recipe and post it to our TikTok. So stay tuned. You know what I'm going to do is I'm going to just repeat immigrant butter like a hundred times into my phone and then my phone will listen to it. Mm -hmm. And then my TikTok feed or Instagram will have immigrant butter that shows up. If there's anybody out there who actually knows what immigrant butter is. Mm -hmm. And then you'll try to make it and make a cooking TikTok. Or well, it's just bacon, grease, flour, and water. We so, can, uh, we can make it go. right now, Dev. All right. Well, we're not going to make it right now on the podcast because guess what we got now coming up? What do we got coming up? We got our short little interview with <laughs> talking about his new song, Stuck, which is available on all streaming platforms. Okay, um, everybody, like not even bullshitting you right now. Like the song's a banger. It's good. Yeah. Like, like, uh, we're friends with drew so like we might sound biased but i guarantee you 100 percent not biased at all it's a great song like it gets it gets it gets the boys fired up yep so and go give it a listen go get a listen and be sure to also watch his socials for all of his shows coming up this summer and you'll be able to listen to that song live that's right all right all let's right. hop into this little interview here right quick let's do it all right hello folks welcome to another interview on the hicks from the six podcast we have drew here again drew how are you doing today welcome doing back. very good good yeah. good it's always good to have you back so uh we got to start it off with uh with the most important thing of all um how did your harvest go this year <laughs> not too bad surprised for how dry it got there in uh august and september for us um it was it was crazy we were we were playing shows all summer and um it just like rolled right into harvest and then we just went it was like 30 days straight just just going no breaks or anything which was nuts but we were done like yeah by mid-september third week in september there and uh had it all in the bin and actually came off pretty good considering uh how dry it was we're gonna need some moisture going into the spring here but we were we we're pretty happy all things considered so yeah well over or under five red bulls per day <laughs> not too big of more of a more of a coffee canister kind of guy <laughs> all right over under four or five coffees per day then might, might have to start uh getting into the red bulls for for later <laughs> on to do that again i'm getting too old for this shit <laughs> also, yeah, fair enough yeah um so you have a new song that came out just recently stuck yeah which is an awesome song we both love it how did you guys ever get stuck during harvest did you accidentally plant the combine was, once or was that, the, like that? was that the inspiration for the song or was it something else i have yeah I, me I remember one of the first days like dad left i think he had like a a doctor's appointment or something and i like yeah i went like just right on the edge of a soap hole and just just had to call the neighbors to it's like you couldn't couldn't leave me for one day so i uh took a while to recover from that one but um <laughs> yeah it's uh oh, there's, there's always been a few but yeah no the song's kind of it kind of draws people in thinking it's about that but yeah it's more about just just loving it out in the country not not feeling stuck at all you know it's um it's something when i went into college and went into the city i guess safe for a couple of years uh it uh was something once once i knew i was done that two years i knew i was i was pretty much done with the city i haven't haven't lived in a city again since and um yeah just uh getting back out to the country and and not feeling stuck at all <laughs> yeah there you go awesome so when you're writing a song like that do you do you think it takes or or does it take more time to do the actual lyrics itself or do you think like the instrumental part of it takes more time we spent a lot of time on the instrumental part. This was actually uh, kind of a mid-pandemic co-write with uh, another small town boy, Devin Cooper there. He's from Innisfail. Okay. And, um, same thing. He actually is living in the city now, but we were just kind of talking about being from the country and loving it out there. And and uh, it came it came pretty quick, actually. It was, a, it was a really fun one to write. And I mean, there's nothing too complicated in the song. We just kind of wanted to have fun with it. And when we got into the studio, it was uh, is where we really kind of started experimenting. We ended up doing the barn sessions was my last thing and used all my like road band and just had so much fun doing that. So we brought a lot of those guys back in and just did it. This was kind of the first one where I was like super comfortable, kind of like 10 year plus friendships with a lot of people in the studio. A lot of the times you go into a studio and the producer you might know pretty well but he's bringing in a band from you know his, his kind of studio band that, that he knows and i've done some in ontario and nashville so 
you know, these guys are, are real pros and maybe don't always feel like you have the best input. You're kind of throwing things out and they're like, ah, oh, maybe, you know, <laughs> so this, <laughs> like, oh, let's like, let's spend a whole day on it and just really work it out. And I think, I think that's what gave it kind of a cool sound somewhere between we have like some seventies rock and roll guitars. And I grew up on a lot of that, that old rock and roll. And then um, some traditional country just with the rhythm section and uh, some funky bass in there and stuff too. So it's got a lot going on in it. And I, I think, um, you know, people are kind of commenting on the lyrics, but they're also kind of noticing the production. So it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to work on the production on this one. Yeah, no, I love that song. And everybody listening to this podcast right now, make sure you go listen to uh, Stuck by Drew Gregory. Um, do you have Do you have any more songs about or questions about the song specifically? Have you been able to play this song live yet? Or did you even play it live or yeah. beforehand before you even got released officially? I was, yeah. We've actually had like the other kind of cool thing, again, about producing this with the road band is like, we've tried several different renditions live. So this has kind of gone through a few and, and what you hear the final production is probably kind of a mixture of all the things that we tried. We had it faster and we slowed it down a little funkier kind of, and this is kind of what we landed on was right in the middle, but it's the first time we've ever done that with a song. Usually they're kind of waiting for the, the final product, you know, from the, from the other producers and then getting it. This one we, we rehearsed many times and tried in many different settings and, uh, the song always got a positive reaction, so I was just kind of trying to hone in on uh, on what what the stuff was that we liked the best about it. And we got the big uh, intro. We always kind of kick it off with that big kind of vocal only intro that just sounds real front porch hillbilly kind of thing, which yeah. is uh, what we were after. And I think that draws people in live as well. So yeah, it's it's definitely gone over live, and that's one reason it was the song we picked to to be the first one to cut and first one to release on this new project. Yeah, for awesome. sure. The final draft sounds great. So yeah. <laughs> whatever you guys did, it was good. <laughs> I also think all the social media, TikToks and stuff was also a good touch with you on the farm in the middle of summer. Climbing summer down shining. from the bins. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you actually, you're when you're up on the bins, did you actually check the grain and make sure the levels were all right? Or did you just kind of just, oh, no, it's good. <laughs> a little for show maybe that day. A little bit. <laughs> 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 gotta make sure my gut sucked in climbing climbing down those bin stairs there so, uh -huh. yeah it was fun we um that was in august we were actually planning on we were hoping to get this out before christmas in the music industry when you get into december you kind of don't want to release anything because it's you know everybody's adding christmas music and, and all that stuff so we kind of left it alone we couldn't get it out by the end of november so yeah it's a little all all the promo around it is is uh was shot in august i think so yeah i noticed <laughs> that because there wasn't any snow on the ground <laughs> the grass is green <laughs> <laughs> but now we're getting i mean we're getting people from texas and alabama commenting on it so i guess you can there's not much snow down there so maybe we'll uh get some get some rednecks down south uh, into it too that's right yeah that's right expand a little bit awesome so i'm gonna go back to a comment you just said earlier just a little bit ago here and you said it's a part of a project coming up Do you, can you expand on that project or is that kind of classified information yeah yeah no i've been been a couple of trips to nashville um this uh this winter we don't honestly don't even have any dates you know locked down for for when the next thing's going to be and, and release but um yeah, it was, it was kind of over COVID, just obviously financially, just the the money wasn't there to, to put back in to do a lot of recording. Always costs a lot. So uh, now we had a great summer this last summer. So we've definitely been back in the studio. So we've got uh, a few things down and, and lots of stuff written. And um, yeah, within the year, there's going to be going to be more, which is nice. It's always exciting to uh, to have new music in the, in the bank and, and uh, getting people excited about it going into summer again, too. So last summer, we were just riding on the fact that everybody just wanted to get out and party again. And, and do all <laughs> it. it's, uh, this, this summer, we're going to need some music to, to help promote things. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Speaking of summer, do you have you already started planning? What are some big do you have any big stops already uh, in mind? Yeah, a couple um couple aren't announced yet i think we're gonna be well hopefully heading out to the east coast which would be kind of cool uh for Ooh. the first time doing some significant stuff out there and then um stampede's probably gonna be a big one for us again in calgary it's always fun but uh yeah it's it's looking with this new music that it's kind of building building some of that so just now is kind of when everybody's really starting to ramp up booking and stuff so um we got uh we got a line on a few big things so yeah hopefully in the next month or two we'll really be announcing some stuff and uh still doing some of the rodeo scene and stuff to to fill out a lot of the weekends which we always love and keeps us sharp but uh yeah aiming at a lot of the bigger festivals and stuff this year too 
Awesome. Yeah, for sure. Well, and we, we, I like, we saw you in sundry and I know you did uh CFR as well. Um, yeah. did it, did, it went well this past year then you got, yeah. you got any crazy stories or was it pretty even feel <laughs> the CFR one's always an interesting one. It's um, cause it's the all-star band. So it's a few of the guys I've played with, but it's not all my band. So they're, uh, there's always uh, that element of surprise coming into that one, but um, those guys are great. I mean, we had a lot of fun there. Um, Any yeah. bras that were thrown on the stage this summer? <laughs> Not too. Nashville North is probably our craziest one because, like, our start time at that one is is midnight. So oh, yeah, geez. everybody's getting primed by the yeah. Primed. Everybody's already buckled by that point. <laughs> So uh, you see some see some stuff from from that stage for sure. But um, yeah, I don't know. Just going in, like I said, that. The harvest weekend we had we were all over rocky mountain house and back up to uh where did we go what's the college up there the egg college vermilion um oh, Lake 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 there yeah. yeah so there and then back down towards rocky mountain like it was just there just seemed to be so much we just took everything on because it was just like in you know april it kind of seemed like all right we're finally finally done with this pandemic stuff so we're like oh we'll never turn a gig down again and then uh by the end of august we're like oh fuck, wish i wish i turned some gigs down. <laughs> yeah, so it was good wasn't complaining too much but uh yeah by the time that rolled into harvest and i was, I was ready for a little break in uh, october there but um yeah no feeling feeling the energy coming again for this summer and just planning a little better and um I think it's gonna be a fun one yeah right awesome. awesome well one thing i noticed from sundry as well like i know when you went on stage you guys started with grassroots yeah like your own song and then after that you kind of just went to strictly covers yeah. um do you find most of the time like like do you wish that you could you would do more of your own songs and is that something you plan to do yeah like obviously when you go to these cabarets you kind of just want to please the people and you want to play songs that they know so i i understand that side of it but I, I was hoping to hear more of your songs as well so yeah it's always a balance we try to get uh quite a few in but yeah things like that i mean i just remember going to them so much being at a young age i'm like what would i want to hear you know what would what would yeah. keep me amped up and um yeah we got a few songs that people are familiar with but you know not not enough to probably fill a whole night but when we get into some of these festivals where we're doing like 45 minutes and one hour sets then it can be all the original stuff so that definitely is the aim going forward as, as mm -hmm. much as we can fill um the calendar with with that kind of stuff but um man there's still something just so fun about the rodeo crowd and it just seems yeah. my crowd is what i grew up with and stuff too <laughs> and and just uh love playing that and playing some of the old hits and stuff too it, it teaches you a little bit about what uh what works and what doesn't and that's why i say like songs like stuck you can play that and we notice people's heads kind of turn you know so we can like fill a night with that kind of stuff where it's uh still that you know where people aren't super familiar with you but those songs are the ones that really draw people in and like oh i mean we'll look this up and stuff and um yeah it's uh it's been a good song for that so yeah more of that coming yeah awesome. you'll, have, you'll have to mix in shitting in the barn as well <laughs> That's a funny one too, because you need people to be lit. Like that's like you got to be listening to that story. Yeah, yeah. I like, showed that song to my dad, and he loved it. He was <laughs> laughing the whole time. <laughs> if, you're, if you're listening to that one live, and and you come halfway through, you, you're gonna be <laughs> funny luck. So yeah, it's, what's uh, going on here? <laughs> certain crowds, certain crowds. <laughs> all right you got anything else man? no no we just wanted to do a quick one here thanks for coming on drew we'll have to get you on again here in the future yeah, but anytime. uh but yeah good luck to you this summer and uh good luck with harvest and and well, also the, the whole farming season yeah. not just harvest plant yeah, spring, spring, yeah you know a little bit of everything season. that's yeah. the goal calling, like, calling during this winter too we have yeah. a harvest yeah no you yeah. bet no it's always good chatting with you guys thanks for having me on and always make sure you come say hi if you're around too no worries. Will do. Take care. Have a good night, eh? Good deal. See you guys. Too hot to climb that mountain. Too drunk to get too far. Too broke to buy my liquor. So I drink it from a jar. In a duck yard full of all that's ties and a beat up old farm truck. Yeah. Oh, what's the next part, Dev? I don't know, but I think you should keep the singing through. Just saying. But hey, Drew. Again. Hey, Drew. Let's collab. <laughs> No, I don't think I so. I could sing with you, man. No, but thank you, Drew, though, uh, for coming on to the podcast again. Again. Um, there will be a third time, probably. There might be a third time. There might be a video coming up. Stay tuned for more collabs with Drew. Yep. He's an awesome fella. That's right. Great person to meet. Um, so if you ever see, see him around uh, this summer, be sure to say hi. He's very friendly and stuff like that. So, Perfect. All right. 
Shall we hop into our last segment? What is the last segment? Then? This or that. Okay. So this is okay. a kind of, again, test fire segment. We haven't really, we've done it once. It didn't go very good, but we're going to try it again. All right. <laughs> you ready, though? Ready? I thought it went pretty well last time. All right. I got my, I got the first one right off the, right right, off no, the top. No, I go first. Top. This or that. Eagles or Chiefs. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. So technically, um, I'm going to go with the Eagles. Okay. How you're, about you? You're, you're a scumbag Philly fan. Yep. Same, bro. Same. Let's go Eagles. Eagles. All right, Eagles. I got one. Ready? Yep. Pork or chicken? Because they're both so very basic. Yeah, but it's such a like they're both similar flavors. You know what I mean? It's all oh, like beef. It's no. all like red meat. Pork has more flavor, but I feel like chicken is more diverse. Fair enough. If that makes any so sense. So where are you going with that? You know what? I'm going to stay with chicken because I feel like I have chicken a lot more than I do pork. And also, you can't beat, you know, a fried chicken sandwich. You know, Ooh. Nashville hot chicken sandwich, hot damn. I had Ooh. one for lunch today. Pretty good. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Hell yeah. Good. Had some coleslaw on there and some Ooh. pickles, and a little That's hot good. sauce. That's good. Hot damn. Hot damn. Yeah. And you know what? I'm going to go with the opposite. I like pork. So pulled, is it just you like pulled pork. Okay, uh, but how often are you having pulled pork? I mean, if my mom was going to make pulled pork, I'm having How three of those often sandwiches. are you cooking pulled pork? Or how often are you going to a restaurant and having pulled pork? Not very often, but that's what it makes it so good. It's just like That's what makes it good, but like if you had to completely eliminate chicken, are you thinking that you would actually substitute the chicken with pulled pork? I'd do pulled pork. Okay. All right, you got another hey, one? Hey, I, I love pulled pork, man. I'm just saying I probably eat chicken a little more often. All right, you got another one? I had one here. All right. Um, let me see. Oh, you can't find it? Uh, well, while it takes this time to find it, um, be sure to check the links in our description. And also, go check out Bar Double, Bar Double Diamond. Winter is coming to a close, so be sure to get your wild eggs, though, before the snow disappears. Use code HICKS10. You can either use it on our on our web on our Etsy up or up and coming website, depends if it's out or not, or DM or that code. Okay, I got a super basic one here. Like it almost like hurts me to even say it because it is so basic. And I, I think I know actually I don't know where you stand on this one. Coke or Pepsi, or as River, our friend River would like to say, Pepsi. Pepsi. <laughs> um I'm gonna go with Pepsi. I like Pepsi. What? I think that Coke leaves like a film on your teeth. You're such a pussy. I don't like it. You're such a pussy. Nah. What do you like? Coke. Nah. It's got more bite to it, man. Nah. You Pepsi. feel like more of a man drinking it. You drink it and it like hurts you when yeah. you drink too much of it. But that's what I like. I like that little burn in my throat. You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. Um, Pepsi's too sweet, yeah, but are man. Are you going regular Coke? Coke's though? a little more bitter. Pepsi's too sweet. Are you going regular Coke though, or Coke Zero, Coke Diet Coke? Regular Coke. Regular. I like Coke Zero. Okay, I have a question for you as well. All right. If you had the opportunity, would you try the original Coca Cola? Oh, like the water and syrup, basically. No, the one that had cocaine in it. Oh well, yeah. <laughs> well, <it helps. laughs> if, if you had the opportunity, if it was legal, would you have the Probably. original cocaine? Probably. I don't think there was much of a difference. Other than you would get like super stoned, or I mean, no, you, I get, was a mind you get was... super coked out because when you do coke, I don't think you're technically stoned, you're something else. Yeah, but <laughs> I think I saw though on TikTok, there's a, there's a shop or whatever, a soda shop in New York or something like that. Yeah, I've seen that, that as well. That still does the original coke. So I've seen those videos and I've seen like I've seen people like review them. Apparently, it tastes like shit. Uh, yeah. The same. I bet yeah. you the thing too. Because that's just like, yeah, that's just carbonated water and then they mix in the syrup. But apparently it, it ain't good from what I've been told. I think too, like uh, the thing is with that is if you get a can of Coke, the consistency is always the same. Where if you're you have someone making it for you in front of you, they could sometimes add too much water, yeah. add not enough water, add too much syrup, add not enough syrup, or they can mess up the carbonation. Yeah. Like I just think like you There's don't too many vari vari variables. variables to go wrong. That's a tough word to say. Yeah, variables. All right. All right. I got one here. Actually, no, it's your turn, isn't it? Is it my turn? I think so. Um, 
No, I just had the one off. Okay, I got one. I got another All one. All right, last okay. one, last one. All right. So, mm-hmm. new movie comes out. Let's say Top Gun, for example. I didn't go see it. Okay. But Top Gun, okay. Good movie, by the way. Would you rather... This or that, I guess. It's yeah. this or that. Are you going to the movie theater? Or would you prefer just to stream it from home? Stream it from home. Really? Yep. Hmm. See... There is the you're that, such a Gen Z like you know piece what, of though? shit. No, but yeah, but here's the thing. All right, here's the thing. What's what's the thing? Here's the thing. I don't like. I like the aesthetic of going to the movie theater. You get the butter popcorn. You maybe have a date with the other type of thing. You Ooh, know? you know. I didn't know we were bringing girls to this. <laughs> I was just talking about movies. But you know, there's the aesthetic behind it. You know what I mean? However, I don't know. I always feel super gross coming out of a movie theater. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I'm always super, like, I'm super. Sweaty. What are you doing in the movie? Theater? I just don't, I don't, I feel nasty. Maybe it's the butter popcorn. I have no clue. Are you just sweating buckets the whole time? Like, yeah. what's going on? I guess so. But, like, what I like about doing at home is, like, I can watch my sweatpants. I can pause the movie, go grab my stuff. The food is either already paid for via groceries or cheap, and also cheaper. I don't know. I could also have beer, too. And you can also have beer in movie theaters. Yeah, but then if you want more beer, though, you have to leave the movie. They just sneak a bunch in. Uh, well, I I follow the rules. I'm a rule follower. I've done that once or twice. Yeah, I bet you have. Yeah. Yeah. How about you? What are you? What are you doing? Oh, I'm a big movie theater guy. Yeah. And you know what? The one thing that you're not mentioning, and it's the whole reason why you go to the movie theater. Why is that? It's the atmosphere. That's what I'm saying. The aesthetic. The atmosphere. It's different. You go in there and you like feel the movie. You don't just watch a movie. You feel it. Oh. Like you feel like you're more immersed into the movie. Yeah. You're more invested. The movie, it like... It touches you more, you know what I mean? Uh, and yeah, like sure, it's a little expensive getting the popcorn and stuff, but that popcorn they give you at the movie theater, hell of a lot better than the shit you can make at home. Yeah, that's true. And also, you talk about how you can't can't wear sweatpants in a movie theater. Who said you can't wear sweatpants in a movie theater? Is there some sort of dress well, code that I don't I know about? Am I supposed to go to the movie theater in a tuxedo? Is uh, that what it's are, supposed are to be? Are you gonna go on a date in sweatpants? I never said a date. I said we're going to watch a movie. You're going with the boys, all right? How about that? <laughs> All right, here's my question though, because you're apparently a big movie theater connoisseur. Well, I don't go that often, but I'm just saying if Are I you, want, uh, if I'm going to watch a new movie and if I want the best experience possible, you gotta go to the theater, man. Oh, uh, no. Anyways, you gotta go Cineplex. Anyways, are you an old? So, an old, we have the old style movie theater. Are you like an old small town movie theater or are you like comfy seat? Like how nowadays you have the lazy boys and the IMAX 3D experience. Are you that type or are you the old style type? So the ones in old actually aren't that bad. Like when we first came to college, they were like the old leather ones and those ones were pretty rough. Not going to yeah, lie. Yeah, but it doesn't have like the but full they've surround upgraded sound. Them. You know what I mean? No, like, they, it has the full surround okay, sound. Okay. It just doesn't have those like lazy boy seats. And, and like to be honest, the seats... I don't really care as much about it's it's the, the sound it's having like that bass and having that the the whole surround sound system that it, that that's more important to me than the actual seats are. So you're more of like a big IMAX like I'm going a, to the fancy theater type of thing and watching this movie. Yeah, I like that, but I, I mean old the old theater is also just fine. Mm-hmm. So, if you're an old, try out the old theater. Yeah, May May Mayfield Mayflat Mayfield. I don't think know. that's what it is. Donna? Yeah, I think that's what it's called. I was just called the old cedar. Yeah. Anyways, that was this or that. Um, you were wrong every time. I w- it's an opinionated column or a section of the podcast, so there is no wrong answers. You were wrong. No, whatever. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thanks, folks, for listening to another episode of the Hicks from the Six podcast. Uh, be sure to check out all of our socials, including Instagram, TikTok. We do have Facebook and also Twitter. Okay. And tune into our YouTube channel. It has been it's been going pretty good so far. Every Wednesday, folks. I don't know what we have planned for next Wednesday. I think we're kind of 
we're gonna be scrambling for something here but stay tuned we'll figure I, something out right now it's kind of just doing the odd video and stuff like that and i think stay tuned for more of the summer that's gonna be some big egg tours i think coming up and stuff like that we got some stuff coming up pipeline. also since this is going to be coming out on sunday um i've been trying to convince devin of this one thing um at the old college they're doing a hot wings challenge mm -hmm. next week thursday and i'm trying to convince devin to do it anybody who's listening if you think devin should do it along with me or even without me just devin by himself make sure to like comment on our tiktoks or our instagram post or anything but let's get dev in this hot wing challenge not gonna happen let's get it done folks mm -hmm. devin might just die it yeah. might become a solo podcast after it but yeah. that's the chance that's the risk i'm willing to take <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> Hey, All right, man. guys, stay tuned for next week. Uh, thanks for listening.